Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm the video specialist here at eLearning Brothers. Today we're going to be talking about and demonstrating new, uh, or the Captivate 2019's newest features. Um, for those of you that have been on for a little bit, you got to see a little bit of what we're gonna cover today. This session will be recorded. We'll get a copy of it posted on our blog. And uh, we'll also put a really detailed uh, recap in there so that if you don't catch everything or if you wish it was all written down, it will be. So you'll be able to access that at elearningbrothers.com. If you have questions during the webinar, we'll be ready to answer your questions in the questions panel. It looks like several of you have already found that questions panel, so do please uh, use that, and we'll get to as many of them as we can. All right, so to talk to us about Captivate, and we'll just jump right in. We have Andrew Vass, one of our Captivate developers, with us today, and uh, I'll turn the time over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I am so excited to share with you the new features in Captivate's brand new update that was just released uh, last week, I believe. Usually these updates come with just a few bug fixes, but this one comes with a ton of brand new, brand new features and interface updates that really, really help take Captivate to the next level. And the best part is that it's completely free because it's included with the Captivate 2019. It's not a brand new version. So again, if some of you were on a few minutes ago, you probably already saw this, but this is kind of what I'm gonna be covering today. There is a lot of stuff. So I'm going to be moving kind of quickly through all of this, just so I can kind of, just so I can touch a little bit on all of these updates. We'll stop a couple times for some questions, but like Andrew mentioned, we'll post a very detailed recap blog um, later this week, probably I think tomorrow is when we post that, that will have a lot more information in there in case you miss anything. All right, so I'm going to jump right into Captivate. Let me get out of my PowerPoint here. And real, really quick, I am going to be working in the brand new version of Captivate. So if you haven't already, make sure you update your, your Adobe Captivate 2019 installation. You can do that by coming up to help and then check for updates. And then that will kind of read for it, and if the, you have an update available, it'll allow you to install it directly from there. I already updated that, so it's going to show that I am working in Captivate version 11.5. That is the most current one, so maybe just check, make sure that you're running that version so you'll be able to follow along with me. All right, jumping right in, I'm going to open a blank project. Now, all of the features and updates I talk about today will also be able to be used in a responsive project. I'll actually jump into a responsive project a little bit later, but they haven't changed anything as far as responsive workflow or anything like that. The um, responsive, the fluid boxes, everything has stayed the same. So they've changed stuff. They have changed a few other things though. Okay, jumping right in, the first thing we're gonna talk about is the brand new assets panel. Now, the first thing that's changed is that that button has actually gotten a new uh, new design and it's it's been moved. I believe it was over here originally and now it's now it's over here. If I open this, you can see that it's been redesigned quite a bit, a, a cleaner redesign here. And everything that was available in the assets panel in the previous version of Captivate 2019 will still be available in here for you. They've just added a lot of cool things. So the first is this assets tab. Now in here, this is going to show all the assets that come available to you right when you update to version 11.5. You're going to get all of this. First are some quick start projects. I'll actually get into these a little deeper in a few minutes once I go through all of the parts of the new assets panel. We have quick start projects here. You have your characters. These are the same characters that have been included in previous versions of Captivate. They're just redesigned here a little bit. Something that is new are these icons. There are quite a few SVG icons in here that you can download and add to your Captivate project and edit just like you would any other SVG. Have some 360 assets here that will help you get started on creating a virtual reality project which is another huge update that I'm going to, to get into towards the end. And they've also added some stock assets. So there are some images, videos, and audio files in here. These are, I think this probably just to promote the, um, promote the Adobe stock library. There's not a whole, there's not a ton in here, but there are quite a few that can help you 
help you get started with a project if you just want a um, a project background or need a quick image you can jump in here download these these are all going to be JPEG files same with videos these are all mp4s quite a few in here there's this nice preview window and you can browse through those and also audio these are all WAV files here and then finally there are some captivate buttons and what these are these are actually image buttons that will work just like any other button in Captivate. If I insert this, let me just show you. Come over here. This works just like a button. It has an advanced action. You can change and edit the actions just um, just as you would any other Captivate button. Just kind of helps you if you want to add some custom navigation. It helps to be able to have navigation buttons that look the same and are the same style. Also, a nice update is that each of these categories also has a search bar, so you can search in each of these windows to find exactly the asset you need. The next update is this Discover tab, and this is actually going to change based on which, um, which category I have selected over here on the left. So, for example, if I have the Projects tab and I come over here to the Discover, that's going to open up the eLearning Brothers Asset Library just the same as it did in the original version of Captivate 2019. There hasn't been anything that's changed as far as navigation and as far as what's available for download in here. This is all the same. If I have the character selected, this is going to pop up the, the eLearning Brothers characters packs right here. And then if I have icons selected, that's going to be grayed out because there are no icons currently that you can browse and download more of. The 360 assets, images, and videos are going to open up the Adobe Stock Library, like I mentioned before. And if you have an Adobe Stock subscription, you can download thousands more in here, and those will appear in your Downloads window as well. Moving over to the Downloads window, this is going to be everything that I download from either the Adobe Stock Libra Library or the eLearning Brothers Asset Library. Everything's going to appear in here. The projects are going to be any templates that I downloaded. So those are any Captivate files. Any downloaded characters will appear here. And then any downloaded images and videos will appear here. And this also has a search bar. So you can search those as well. All right, and that's really it as far as the updates to the assets panel. A uh, not, not super drastic, really easy to, to navigate still, but I think it's a lot cleaner and makes more sense for development. Now coming back to these quick start projects, what these are, these are six projects that Adobe has gone to quite, um, they put quite a lot of effort into creating these. What these are, these aren't just layouts or static slides, these are full projects. You may um, We've called them course starters before. They're kind of similar. They come with layout files, click to review files, uh, click to review slides, scenario slides, and full full quiz slides with advanced actions and variables, everything included in there. So if you're a beginner, this is really helpful for you to get started on a project and kind of teach you as you go how, how to use Captivate, how to use the actions and variables you would need to create a fully functioning project. And if you're a more advanced user, these may help you with some design inspiration, some layout inspiration, but they're all there for you. As far as getting started with these quick start projects, there's a couple options here. If I have the projects selected up here, I can select any of these and then just click open as a new project and that'll open up the entire project with all of the slides that I can use. Or I can double click in here and that will open up all of the slides that are available in each of those quick start projects. So I can view those, select the ones that I want, and then insert them into my project. They also have them broken down into categories. So if I just know that I want this, this league design, but I only want an objective slide, I can select this and it'll show me the objective slide, objectives slides there. I can select clear all those filters to go back to the main screen. Or I can select all those slides, insert all 44 slides. There's a, that's a lot, 44 slides with this particular quick starter project. And I can also come back here 
Instead of projects, I can select slides, and then that will show me all of the, the different slides in all of the Quick Start projects that are available for me to use. I can search through those, and again, I can narrow down, or I can, I can drill down into the specific type, type of slide there. Really, really trying to make it easy for you to get started creating a project without having to worry about that steep learning curve that comes when you start with a brand new authoring tool and you kind of don't know what to do. It's really easy here. Let's see what one of these looks like. I'm going to open up this League Quick Starter and just like open as a new project. And that's going to download that and open it for me. It's a lot of slides, 44 slides, so it's going to take a while. There we go. And I have this project to input my content just as I would wish. Everything is created. Everything that can be created directly in Captivate is created. So you have editable text, editable smart shapes, and editable buttons. Anything you need to do to, to make this project your own, you can do that here. Like I mentioned, there's, there's layout slides. If I scroll down, I have some drag and drop slides. There's a video content slide here and again there's a uh, captive built-in captivate quiz right at the end everything you need to get started and to upload this to your LMS this is a good segue into another update that they have other than the um, other than these quick start projects they've also made some update to captivate themes now if I select a slide and come over here to the properties tab on the right I now have this theme drop down available to me and what they what what they now allow is for you to have have multiple themes in one project. So right now, this project only uses only uses the league theme, so that's the only theme that will show up there. However, if I come over here to the themes drop down, this is now broken up into two different sections. I have themes used in this project, and then other themes available. Captivate, and these are the same themes that were in the previous version of Captivate 2019. Uh, 2019 comes with 12 themes that you can apply to your project to get started. So I can apply any of these that I want. And also a new thing is if I right click one of these, I'm now selected, I'm, I'm now given a few options. So I can apply this theme to all slides, which self-explanatory will update every single slide in my project to be this City Vibes theme. I can apply to the selected slides, or I can apply to matching slides. I'll get in more to what this means in just a second. So if I select apply to selected slides only, click yes, that is going to apply the City Vibes theme to this welcome layout slide that I had selected. You can see that some of the colors change, the, um, some of the text boxes change, the uh, text box properties change. And that's going to vary depending on, really depending on the theme you're changing to and also the theme you're changing from. So there's going to be some, some variations there. But now if I come over here to the properties window, I now have the City Vibes theme and the League theme available for me to use in any, pro, in any slide in my project. Now, when I select a theme, a new theme from this dropdown, what it's going to do is it's going to pop up the master slides and allow me to select the master slides. However, they're still working out some bugs with actually applying master slides to the existing slides in, in an existing theme because a lot of those placeholders are going to come through and it just doesn't really look right. It's going to look a little messy. So until you get that figured out, what I would recommend is just coming up here and doing that right click and then selecting apply to apply to selected slides only, which is actually going to update the theme colors and update the, the text boxes and the object styles and it's not going to reposition everything and add some add some elements that you don't want. So I'm, I'm going to update, let's see, I already updated this first slide to the City Vibes theme. I'm going to come over here and update slide three to the City Vibes theme. Oh, I was just doing what I told you not to do. Update that to the City Vibes theme as well. Just apply that to the selected slide. A few things change there. Now, if I come up here to this theme drop down, right click again and select apply to matching slides, what this is going to do is it's going to up 
update the theme of the slides that have the same theme as the slide that I have currently selected. It might sound a little confusing, but I'll show you what that means. So instead of that City Vibes theme, I'm going to select the Cement and Steel theme, right click, apply to matching slides, and now that's going to update this slide here and my first slide because those were both the City Vibes theme. However, all those other slides that have the league theme will, will not be updated. A few extra options for you, for you there as far as adding themes go. Their themes in Captivate can be a bit confusing. However, if you're pretty well versed in how in what what um, items, what items are included in theme files, then using multiple themes in a project could actually save you a lot of time and make it a lot easier for you to, to update your project to a different style. One more thing that was added to the theme updates. If I open this theme properties right here, I now have theme fonts. So for example, if I it used to just be the theme colors right here, but I now have theme fonts. And I have a bunch of different built-in theme fonts right here, and these are all related to those themes that were shown in the theme drop-down. If I hover over those, I can see that the text is changing, depending on that. And I can also create custom theme fonts as well. I would do that by just selecting Edit. And every theme is able to have three different theme fonts. And you can use any font that you have in your system or from Adobe Typekit to update these theme fonts. So tons and tons of opportunity there. And then if you decide to create a new theme font, you can change the name, change the font, save and apply, and that will update your entire project. Now what's really nice about theme fonts is that it makes updating object styles and updating themes across an, an entire project really, really useful. So if I come over here and select one of these text boxes, now under the character dropdown, at the very top, you'll see your theme fonts as well. So when you're going through and creating object styles, I won't get into how to do that, but as long as you're creating your object styles with theme fonts, now every time you decide to update, you want to update the fonts, all you have to do is change those theme fonts in that window that I just showed you, and it will update all of the object styles that use that particular font, regardless of if the... Um, if the object styles are different. Again, object styles get pretty confusing. I won't go into that, but that is an update there. Okay, I'll stop really quickly here. Are there any questions you can see that should be answered right now? Um, yeah, there's a couple, uh, let me turn my mic on here. Okay, so there's a couple questions about whether these, what you've been showing are responsive design or not. So this is not a responsive design project. I'm just using a blank project. However, all of these features will be available in responsive projects. Okay, excellent. Um, there's also people that are saying um, as they've updated, they've found different problems, but not everybody's saying this. So have you found mm -hmm. any issues as you've updated? The only issue I found, and I haven't tried updating an existing project yet that I've put a lot of that I put a lot of work into. The only bug that I saw was that the first couple of times I tried to open this assets window, nothing would show up. It would just be blank. Okay. However, after closing um, closing Captivate and also resetting my preferences, that fixed the problem. If you just Google uh, reset Captivate preferences, it'll give you step by step. Find something easy in there. How to do that. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah. That that's. A lot of what the questions are, one person said that they lose any characters or assets that they've downloaded from eLearning Brothers every time that they update. Um, is there a way to save those so that they don't get deleted? I don't think so. I don't think that is is currently an option there. So you would have to go in and, and re-download them. However, if they are in your library, so maybe a good option if you're working in a project and you want to have all of those characters, just add them all to your library. You just do that by adding it to the stage. And then that this library is project specific, so that should all come over as well. So work okay. around. And then we'll take one more question. There's a lot of questions here, but uh, I know you've got a lot to cover. So. There's a lot. Uh, the last one is, can you use more fonts than just the Adobe fonts? 
Yep, so if I select this right here, I'll come over to the properties. There it is, and this is where I think Captivate leads in the e-learning authoring space is that they, using fonts, especially with Adobe Typekit, there is so much you can do more than any other authoring tool. So you have your theme fonts, you have your Adobe fonts, so that's anything that you've imported from Typekit. Your web safe fonts, and these are these are fonts that are going to show up the same regardless of if a user has them installed on their computer. And then all of your system fonts, these are going to be every single font that you've actually downloaded onto your computer. So your Adobe fonts are going to appear right under here. You can also open Typekit, go to fonts.adobe.com and import more of those but you can use any font that you have on your system. You just wanna to, want to be careful and make sure that those are going to show up for your end user. Uh, there's, a, again, a lot of tutorials like that. I think we have a couple blogs showing how you can do that. Good, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna close this quick start project, come back to my blank project, delete this, and show you some updates to uh, to editing SVGs. So I'm gonna do that by adding one of those icons that are now available in the assets window. Just select one of these and insert that there. Again, these are SVGs, so they're gonna be scalable just as they have been since Captivate 2017. And it used to be that if you wanted to edit any colors of an SVG file, you would have to round trip through Adobe Illustrator, open up Illustrator, change some colors, save that Illustrator file, come back to Captivate, and then that would be reflected in there for you. However, they've added the ability to change a few SVG properties directly within Captivate. So now if I double click this, I can select some of those SVG properties and I have full color editing capabilities just as I would if for a Captivate Smart Shape in here. So I can go to my theme colors, I can just select from the general color swatches or and I can even use the, the color picker to select that as well. And I also have the ability to change the opacity which wasn't there before. So something really quick, but something that will save you a lot of time, especially if you don't know how to use Illustrator at all and you want to get the scalable uh, benefit of using SVGs and using those built-in icons, which I think are awesome, that, uh, that process is going to, again, save you a ton of time. Another thing, I'm going to keep that over here because I'm going to get into that in just a second. Another thing they've added is being able to use images as buttons. So if you've been developing in Captivate ever since the beginning, you know how much of a pain it's been to create an image button. You used to have to insert a shape and then come over here, select use as button, and then change the fill from solid to image, and then open this, browse for the image on your computer or in your library select that image, open that up, make any changes, click OK, and then you had to, to change the tile, but then you also had to make sure that the dimensions were correct. It was just a huge, huge pain. However, now they have added the ability to just create a button from an image without having to go through all of that. So I can either bring that image over from my library or just drag and drop an image from my computer onto the stage. And now all I have to do is just select use as button. This option used to only be available for, for smart shapes. It's available for images now too. So I can select that. What that's going to do is create those, those button states for me. I can come in here, edit any of those states using the image editor, bring that alpha down for a rollover state. I can also add a visited state just as I would any other button. Saves a ton of time. I'm, I'm so happy that they finally brought that, that feature to Captivate. And it's also possible to do that with SVG images as well. And you, you can do it with any image. So whether it's a GIF, a, a PNG, a JPEG, or an SVG, you will now be able to use to use those images as buttons with full advanced action capability, just like you would any other button. So it'll save you a ton, ton of time. All right, 
moved along here pretty well. The next big update is automatic branching. Now I'm going to show this using a project that I downloaded from the eLearning Brothers Asset Library. I'm going to come over here, select this layout, and open that up. And this is this one is a responsive project, so I will be showing uh, this particular update in a project using fluid boxes. This is a big one. Oh, another update, super helpful. They now have the option to replace missing fonts. So especially if you've ever been using an eLearning Brothers project template, we use a lot of custom fonts in our templates. And that was a complaint we got a lot was that in Captivate, it doesn't let you know if your fonts aren't installed. So it would just automatically default to the system font and then you kind of had to go hunt and find which fonts were incorrect and replace them. Now Captivate will let you know if those the fonts used in a project are not installed and you can decide which fonts, system fonts or Adobe fonts you would like to replace those with. That's really, really helpful. I'm not going to worry about replacing those. I'll just, I'm not going to worry about replacing the correct fonts. I'll just replace them with the default. All right, so default or automatic branching in, in Captivate 2019. So let's say, for example, you have a, you want to create a, a menu slide that branches to different chapters in your course without having to use a bunch of advanced actions. Before, you would have to create your buttons and then use advanced actions to, to map to a specific slide, and then at the end of the the last slide in your chapter, you'd have to make sure that you have a button that's mapping back to to the menu slide, and it just got it just got really messy because of how Captivate handles branching. However, with this new update, they've actually made that completely possible without having to use any advanced actions, and it's really cool. So I'm going to take this objective slide. This is just a static objective slide. There are no advanced actions on this currently. And I'm going to make it a branching menu slide without having to add any advanced actions. So first, I'm going to come in and delete all of these because I just want to use three of them. Delete this guy. All right, so my first, my first step in creating a branching slide is to rename the slide and naming conventions for the next um, several steps that I explain are going to be very important. If you are creating a branching slide, you have to make sure that you name the slide branching. Now you can go back if you, you're probably worried about this showing up incorrectly in your table of contents, you can always go up to your table of contents editor and change that slide title in the table of contents without changing it right here. However, for the branching logic to work that they've built in, on the back end in this new update, you'll have to make sure your slide is called branching. The next thing I want to do is actually create chapter groups. And that is going to vary depending on how many slides you have in your particular project. For this one, I'm just going to create random groups of three slides. So I'm going to select these three slides, right click, come down to group, select create, and then I'm going to name this group Chapter 1. And again, naming conventions are important. Make sure that this can be, this doesn't have to be Chapter 1, I don't believe. However, whatever the slide group name is will have to match the, the buttons that we're going, going to create in just a second. I'm going to create another chapter with the next three slides again. Right click create, call this one chapter two. And then I'm going to insert a final quiz in here. This particular layout doesn't have any quiz slides, so I'm going to delete all of those and then just insert a quiz slide so I can show you how this will work. 
that will add my a multiple choice question and a results slide. And again, I will group those. And I'm going to call this one quiz. Okay, jumping back here, I'm going to make a few adjustments. What I want to do is first change some of the properties on each of these, these shapes, these circle shapes with the image fill, these are going to be my buttons for, for our purposes. So I'll select that and make sure that I have both of these boxes over here checked. Retain state on slide revisit, use as button, and then come over here to the actions. This is the cool part. I actually just have to set this button to no action in order for the branching functionality to work. So I'm going to do that with all of these buttons right here. No action. And no action. Okay, next I'm going to change the name of, the, of these buttons to match the chapter groups that I created and I need them to match exactly. Chapter one, no spaces. Chapter two, and this final one was quiz. And because I want my learners to have to see all the content before they get to the final quiz, I'm going to hide this particular button from the from the output. And the automatic logic that Adobe's built into the new Captivate update will actually make that final quiz button appear for me without having to create any conditional actions or a bunch of variables or anything like that. All right, next, and this doesn't really have anything to do with the branching, but I do want to make sure that I have my, my button states set up correctly. So when I created those, or when I set these shapes to become buttons, it created a rollover state and a down state. However, that image field didn't come over. And this is another update that is so cool that it's gonna save you a ton of time. Instead of having to come over here to the rollover state and actually changing it from a solid fill to an image fill, and then filling that with an image. I can actually now just come in, I'm in the States Editor view, come over to the stage, right click, select Copy Appearance, and then come here, right click, Paste Appearance. This is exactly the same as a the Format Painter feature in Articulate Storyline or in, uh, in PowerPoint. So that will save you a ton of time. What that's going to do is that's going to copy every every property that would be associated with an object style. So that includes text properties, shape fills, shape colors, outlines, uh, stroke colors, stroke width, anything that would be included in this object style, that is what will come over when you copy and paste that fill. And then I also wanna change this to 50% opacity for my rollover state. And then I am going to create a visited state. You also have the option to create an inbuilt visited state whenever you're using a, uh, a custom button. I'll click that OK and then I'll just change that stroke to let's say a green. So that's going to be my visited state. Now I can exit out of the states view and copy this appearance of the entire button and then paste that for all of the other buttons in here. And if I open this, again, I can see that that actually, that brought over the rollover state and the down state because those states are all associated with the same object style. However, it did not bring over the visited state because when you add a visited state, that has its own separate style. So I actually would have to go back, copy the appearance of that visited state, and then create visited states for each of my buttons and then apply or paste that appearance to to my new visited states. However, since that was just a basic stroke change, I will just do that manually here. So I have my visited state and I'll add that to my final quiz.
All right, now the next thing that I need to do to get this to work for the automatic branching is that I need to, I'm actually just going to delete that slide so I have one title slide. I need to first make sure that the default Captivate navigation is not turned on. So I'll just come over to Themes, Skin Editor. All these are opening on my other monitor. And then hide the playback control so that won't be in there. And then what I need to do is add some custom navigation. So I'm just going to add a custom next button for our purposes here. It's not going to look pretty, but it will get the job done. Change this to next and then unlock that from the fluid box. And then bring that over there. I'm going to make that be visible for the entirety of the slide and then come over here and then deselect pause after because I already have a click box. All eLearning Brothers templates will have a click box that pauses the slide for you. And then what I'm going to do is copy this next button and then paste it on every slide in each of my each of my um, my chapters that I created. However, on the last slide in the chapter, what I have to do is instead of go to the next slide, I will need to change that to continue. And that's going to make that, uh, that branching navigation work properly. And then for this particular one, I need to remove this click box that is pausing the slide and then just have this next button pause the slide on the final slide. And I'll make that pause at the very end there. I'll do that for chapter two. And make those adjustments. Let's wait for rest of slide. And then pause after. Again, sorry, I'm moving really quickly here. I want to make sure I get all of these and then I deleted that click box so that next button is actually pausing that slide for me. Now if I preview this project because I have my naming conventions correctly and because I, I have that next button set in place that built-in logic should work. I have my next button here that's going right there. I have my, my final quiz button is hidden because I want to make sure that they view all the other content before they can see that quiz button. Now remember, I don't have any advanced actions or anything on these buttons. I actually only ha I ha I actually have these selected to no, to no action. However, if I click that, that's jumping to my first, my first, uh, my first chapter. And then next button is moving along. Here's the third slide right here. And because I changed this from go to next slide to continue, once I select next, that's popping back to my menu slide, even though I didn't have to map that myself and I have that visited state there. Same thing with this chapter two right here. On this third slide, the next button to take me to my final quiz there. And that's all completely built in on, cap on the back end of this new Captivate update. I don't have to worry about any, um, any advanced actions or any variables. As long as I have those naming conventions, it's going to do that automatically for me. Now, before I get into questions, I'm actually going to show you another way that you can use some of the, the new built-in uh, built functionality that comes with the new Captivate update. And I'm going to show that using an automatic click to reveal and forced navigation. So I'm going to open up another asset that I downloaded from the eLearning Brothers library. And this is just a basic timeline click to reveal slide. Now previously in other in earlier versions of Captivate in order to create a click to reveal replace those fonts here you had to actually put a lot of different advanced actions. You had to create a multi-state object and add a bunch of different states and then make sure that you have advanced actions that are actually mapping to those states. If I click this button here, 
come over to actions, I can see those all right here. Lots of different actions that are enabling and disabling buttons and changing changing a bunch of states depending on which button is selected. And I have several actions there. It can get kind of cumbersome and confusing. So what Adobe did is actually similar to the, um, the branch navigation that I've shown. They've actually made it so you can create a click to reveal interaction using multi-state objects just by employing some naming conventions here. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the actions on each of these buttons. This particular interaction has six buttons. Again, just come over here and select no action, similar to that last one. And because these are not in fluid boxes, I can actually select all of those. Come over here, no action right there. And then my next thing I need to do is, again, change the name of the slide. So what this is, is Captivate's calling this a multi-state interaction. So I just need to name the slide multi-state. That's all I need to do. Again, I can, I can update that in my table of contents if I need to. Now, I need to make sure that for the click to reveal, I actually have a multi-state object that is using states as the click to reveal. And I do, this particular interaction does that. I have this text box right here that has a lot of different states that are being shown depending on which button is selected. So I have six states right here and they're all similar naming conventions, content one, content two, content three. I can name these whatever I want. I just have to make sure that I use that same name when renaming the buttons. So I renamed the state, or excuse me, the slide, renamed it multi-state. Now I need to rename my multi-state object, ms underscore, and then whatever the interaction is called. So this particular one is called timeline. I'm going to call this ms timeline. Now I need to come and rename these buttons. So the naming convention here is start with the name of the interaction, which I said was timeline underscore the name of the state that this button is corresponding to. So I just I just showed you the states that I have, their content and then a number. So this particular button is going to show the state content one. So I'm naming it timeline underscore content one. And then I'll just copy this and apply that to each of these. Three. four, five, and six here. And that's all I have to do in order to get this, uh, this interaction to function properly. Again, you can see that I have no action associated with this button. However, if I preview the project, because I set up those naming conventions properly, once I click this button, it's going to change that state for me automatically. And I don't have to worry about creating a bunch of different advanced actions there. That's all you have to do to create a multi-state object. For some reason, if I instead, if this was called, if this particular multi-state ob object, I had a typo in there for some reason, maybe it, I called it timelines instead of timeline. And then these buttons were called timeline the interaction would be broken. So the naming conventions have to be consistent. And what's nice about this is I can also employ force navigation just by using some similar naming conventions. It used to be that if you wanted to lock down the next button on an interaction slide, you would have to add a bunch of different variables, a lot of different conditional actions, making sure that every single button had been clicked before the next, the next button became available or became enabled. However, you can do that automatically by just changing the name of that next button. So I'll come up in here, add a button. Call this one next. Oh. I'm 
not from the food box, I'll move that up here. And then again, stop that from pausing because I already have a quick box that's pausing that for me. And then extend it for the rest of the slide. And then I will hide that from the output by selecting that I right there. And then the naming convention here is the name of the multi-state interaction. So this one was timeline, underscore, completed. That's all I have to do is make sure that my next button is hidden from the output and it has the proper naming conventions. Now, if I preview the project, bring that over. My next button's not showing. Now I can click, once I click through all of these, that next button appeared and I can continue through the course. All I had to do was make sure that the naming convention was set up properly. Uh, any, I'm sure there's actually a lot of questions about this, but any that I can, I can answer quickly, maybe just one or two of them. Um, I would like to ask you to not answer right now quickly, but rather uh, there's a lot of questions about branching. Okay. Um, perhaps we could put together a blog on that yeah. uh, in the future and you guys can, can find that there next time Andrew has time. So in 2022, 2023. We'll see. Who knows? Uh, yeah, we definitely plan on releasing some more chunked instructional videos about each of these new updates and how and diving deeper into how you can actually use them and apply them to your courses. Um, another question that has come up, um, if we're having – if any of these things, if we are trying them on the newest version as well and they're not working, mm -hmm. where can we go to troubleshoot those? Where would you point people? So what I would do is go to the Captivate forums, uh, the Adobe eLearning community. Just Google that. They have a lot of experts that are really active in there that are answering uh, a lot of questions on the forums. And you can also just email Adobe support. They're not as responsive as the, the forums would be, just because in the forums you're getting feedback from a bunch of different users. However, they, they will get back to you and help you diagnose that problem. I haven't had any issues, and I've been playing around with this quite a bit the past few days. I haven't found any instances of these not working, so it may just be naming conventions are improperly um, improperly typed or you're extending it a little bit past what it can actually do it did just barely get released so it is pretty minimal there I'm also seeing a report uh, from someone in our audience that says that there was a bug in the Mac version and so Adobe is in the process of patching that oh, so good to know. if uh, if you're on a Mac Andrews here on Windows but if you are on a Mac and experiencing some issues you may want to wait a little bit mm -hmm. or uh, reach out to Adobe to get an update on that yes that is a um, that's a great question. I didn't mention that before. All right, so we'll just uh, keep moving along then. Cool. All right, ten minutes left, and I have two more things to show you. The next update is in with virtual reality. So in the first version of Captivate 2019, I'm gonna close all of these. They introduced virtual reality projects. They're really cool, but they're actually really minimal. There was not a lot you could do there. However, they have added some awesome updates and new features in this new um, version 11.5. So I'm just going to create a new virtual reality project here. And I'm sure a lot of you are not familiar with virtual reality projects and exactly how these work. I'm again just going to go through the new updates here. I won't be explaining kind of how, how to get a virtual reality project up and, uh, up and running. Again, lots of instructional videos out there for you to be able to watch. So the first update here, actually, let me let me just open up from the assets panel a VR image for you to see. 360 image. First big update to VR is with hotspots. Now, adding hotspots is exactly the same. You just add that right here, it'll show up on the stage. However, you now have the option to scale them using these dragging points, and they are all SVG images, so they should scale up and down just fine without using qual losing quality. 
can bring that over here. And what's nice is that now, because of the new way to edit SVGs in Captivate, I can actually edit the colors of these just by double clicking in here. And I have full control over changing the colors, any color that I want. I can use the eyedropper and fill and fill that SVG to, to more match my, my VR environment there. You can also, with, um, that, and that's the only update as far as editing, editing the icons, editing the look of the icons. And the next improvement is with the, the VR actions, especially with the display text, which is the most common here. In the first version of Captivate 2019, you had the option to type the text in here. However, you just kind of had to pray that it would show up properly on output. Now, that is going to show up right on the stage, so you can see exactly what that will display like for your for your learners. You now have the option to change the font properties. You can change the font, the, the size, the alignment, the color, and the opacity. None of that was there in the first version of 2019. And what's nice is that they've also gotten rid of the, the timestamp. So it used to be if you wanted to display text, you would have to type the text that would be displayed and then say, okay, I want this text to only show for eight seconds. Once eight seconds was up, that text would hide. If the learner wanted to see it again, they had to click on the icon. However, with the new update, let's play this. Oh, and VR project previews also show up in full screen now too. They used to be in the, in the first version, they were just kind of that small preview box like the other projects. Play this guy, I can see that there are some, uh, some animations there now that will kind of signify that this is an icon that should be clicked. If I click that text box, now there's an X button here that will allow me to close that whenever I want. So I can have that text displayed for as long as I would like. X that out and then open that again. So that's a really nice update there. Another update is allowing icons to be included in the quiz, just like any smart shape would be in Captivate. So if I want this to report to my final quiz score or show up in my LMS, I can select that here and add some, some points to it. And really anything that you would be able to do with a, with a smart shape, you can do with, a, with an icon in a virtual reality project. They also added the ability to play video with an icon. So I can select on click, play video, browse for a video. We'll just select this one here. And then that video path will show up there if I preview this one more time. Bring this guy over. Now a video will pop up. I have an X button right there, just like the text box. There's a progress a progress meter on the play pause button. And I have the option to play and pause as much as I would want. If I move my mouse off the video, that'll go away. And then I can close and reopen that as much as I would like. And that's all the updates to VR. They're very simple, very few. However, it really expands your capability um, in, with virtual reality projects. I'm really excited to see what, uh, what they're going to do next. There's a lot of potential here with those VR projects. All right. And finally, I will show you the update to interactive video. If I can open up a new project here, we just have a few minutes. Now it used to be that for interactive video or slide video, you either had the option to add a, add a video from your computer, which actually had to be bundled up with your Captivate project and made the project file size massive, or you could use a YouTube video. However, as you know, with YouTube videos, there's a lot of extra stuff on the video. You get video suggestions and you always have that YouTube video title. What they've done with the update is added the ability to have a Vimeo video in here. So let me just copy and paste a link from Vimeo.
And this is similar to, to a YouTube video or just a regular MP4 you would insert in your project. You have the option to move that around in there. For interactive video, you have the options to add some, some overlay slides. I won't get into that because that hasn't been updated at all. However, I will show you the difference between a Vimeo video and a YouTube video. So let's add another slide here. And then add a YouTube link. There's those video previews in that title I was talking about. A lot of extra stuff there. It gets distracting. So let's preview this so you can see the difference there. For Vimeo, once it uh, once it loads, quality is going to be great. You do get that um, that Vimeo icon down there. However, the player is super minimal. It it looks really nice. It looks a lot more like it was actually part of the project rather than just being pulled in from a different site. And with YouTube, again, it just looks a little a little more messy. If you pause the video, you have all these video suggestions here. With a slide video, you can't get rid of that. You have the YouTube title, watch later, share. Once when the project's playing, it looks about the same. However, it's when you pause that interactive or that slide video that you see all of that extra stuff. So they've added that ability to um, to add Vimeo videos for you, and it's also super helpful if you don't have all your videos uploaded to YouTube, which uh, I think a lot of people who have older videos, most of them are uploaded to to Vimeo. You can now stream directly from there without having to actually import those into your project. All right, and I am done. We have a couple more minutes. Are there any last minute questions I can answer? Now, when you say couple, that is like two and a half minutes. Two and a half. So maybe so, one? Well, <laughs> one or two big ones? We'll see. Um, can interactive video include a survey, or is that still a feature that's uh, not available. That, that one has not been updated, no. Okay. Um, this person says, I stopped using scalable projects in version 9 because it was really buggy. Do you know if that's working any better in this newest version? Scalable projects, I imagine that's just a, a blank project. There haven't been any bug fixes I, I know of in this particular update that's fixed any sort of stability issues with blank projects. However, I haven't had any issues with them. It could just be the um, the amount of memory you have on your computer. I know Captivate takes a ton, a ton of memory, so that would definitely affect that. There's the stability. All right, great. Um, there are lots of questions, but a lot of these can be answered um, in our blog follow-up. So I will just make sure that all of these unanswered questions get flagged and we send them over to Andrew afterwards so that we can get those out to you. Um, thank you, Andrew. This has been super useful. A lot of people like the pace. There's a lot to talk about and we went There's as fast as we could. Yeah. If you want to know more about uh, the the updates, we'll, like I said, we'll get this on, on the blog so you can visit that on our site. Um, you can also go to Adobe. Uh, there, There's a couple yep. links. Uh, we'll get them on the in the blog as well that have the full patch notes and, and information like that. If you want to try some of our assets that aren't available directly inside of Adobe, we've got tons of other assets that you can try. You can grab 10 for free by grabbing a free trial at eLearningBrothers.com. Uh, give us a call to schedule a demo uh, or email us at info at eLearningBrothers.com. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Andrew, for this information. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.